do you think that there are kind of there's a middle ground to be found or there are positive solutions that that could actually exist to to change motorsport and to remove that aspect of it that obviously you witnessed very much firsthand um and and is still undoubtedly playing a role in global motorsport if not increasing what can be done i think the reality is that every single racing driver has money in some way shape or form and i think a lot of us hardly have enough to buy a go-kart in the first place let alone sort of run it in the series Ocon's story is great for sure and there are other stories out there where you hear about how precarious their situations were but they still made it and it's inspiring for sure but like yeah like it's becoming increasingly difficult for those kinds of stories to come about because the sport is getting more expensive and the world's getting poorer. So yeah, like it is a bit more difficult, I'd say nowadays than it was about sort of 15, 20 years ago. I think even Fettel said recently that if he was racing today, he would never make it to Formula One. It's just too expensive. There are potential avenues with like esports if if they do the same thing as what was done with like Jan Mardenborough and James Baldwin, where they gave these kids a chance, you know, they did great in uh, sim racing and they gave them a chance in real life. And they took the ball, uh, knocked it out of the park, ran, caught the ball themselves, you know? Esports then is, is probably the best option of the route out in terms of the fact that to some extent it reduces the cost right like once once you have the rig obviously i, I guess i racing is is not a perpetual license it is something that you kind of have to subscribe to and, and buy new stuff with and the costs can rack up pretty quickly there um but they are still ultimately less than what is going to be um what is going to be costing you to to compete in in real life casting series so in terms of solutions to to that issue esports probably stands at the top right yeah I mean, I think it really is becoming more the new grassroots of uh, of motor racing in the sense that, you know, like this is where you're going to find a lot of the talent because there's no, there's no real money hindering these guys. And I've met some pretty intensely competitive people in sim racing. And I mean, the, the esports champion for Formula One, Jano Obmer, like the dude isn't just fast in a sim rig he he's been competitive in real life as well like i think was in a formula four championship he was runner-up to richard vershaw who's one of the most highly rated formula two drivers in the world it is a bit of a um it is a bit of a leap from sim racing to real life it's something that you know especially with the cost of motorsports accessibility and everything like that i do hope that more people take it sort of more seriously and especially given how these sims are becoming more and more realistic of course absolutely and and it's it's a world that uh, is is quite heavily integrated with youtube and, and the online content space obviously when you're dealing with especially f1 esports you, you know there's an idea to kind of turn these guys who are involved much more kind of closely with with online racing obviously and and with the social media side of it they're kind of primed to be in the position to engage more directly with fans and, and be more a part of that world than maybe some of the real drivers who can feel disconnected to it or that it's not kind of something that's as mandatory for them. But for these drivers who, you know, competing in esports, it is so integrated with that online content. Mm -hmm. 